If you're in a toxic relationship with food, it's time to break that relationship, to break up with it once and for all. It's about what's in your mind, not what's going into your stomach. After all, it's not what you're eating, it's what is eating you. You don't need a diet to restrict what you eat. You need to change how you think. You see, our struggle with food, our struggle with our health, our struggle with our weight is all associated with eating. And this actually isn't true. The reason why we almost always resort to food, I'm gonna have comfort food. I mean, what does that word even mean? I'm gonna comfort myself with food is because we have something called an emotional emptiness. The stomach is the seat of all emotions. Babies have got a tummy ache when they can't really express their feelings. So we feel a feeling in our stomach. It's the seat of emotions. We try to push it down or deal with it through food, we often have an emotional emptiness that we try to satisfy with food. After all, here are these words, starved, hungry, empty, full, satisfied. And they are emotional words. I could say, you know, I'm starved of attention. I'm full of love. I'm hungry for success. I'm satisfied with my life. I'm empty since my children left home. And then we say things like sugar, sweetheart this is my honey my sweetie so we're always telling ourselves that sweet stuff makes us happy and when we feel emotionally empty emotionally starved unsatisfied our mind is so confused it reminds us to eat because after all when you're a little baby and you were lying in your crib crying and someone picked you up and put something creamy and sweet in your mouth solved everything you felt connected, you felt loved. Overeating is, is actually an act of regression. No one says, I'm having such a bad day, I need lettuce, I need carrots, I need celery. We'll go, oh, I'm having such a bad day, I need something milky, creamy, macaroni, cheese, toast and butter, ice cream, cake. Because we're trying to reactivate the feeling that worked when you were a baby. When you get that, it's a game change from the time you came onto the planet you learned to get food and love all mixed up and you're still doing it and yet you can't love your body with excess food for your body being loaded with the sugar and chemicals is a punishment in fact your body doesn't crave candy or chips or hot dogs your body would never go hey i just want to be maxed out with chemicals and sugar and fat and preservatives that's not a physical craving it's actually a mental craving, the mind believing this is going to make me happy when we all know binging on food, especially junk food, makes us very unhappy. The feeling of joy doesn't last very long at all. This distorted model of thinking, food is my comfort, food is my friend, food makes me happy, food gets rid of all of my worries just for a little while. This has led to catastrophic effects within our relationship with food and our relationship with our bodies. And what we absolutely must change is the way we see and treat food. Food should be something we eat when we're hungry, that we enjoy. Of course, it's bonding, it's connecting, we have family dinners, we go on dates. That's all absolutely fine, but it shouldn't be something that leaves you feeling shameful, guilty, blameful, remorseful, and out of control. That should not happen. You see, no animal overeats. I have cats, when they're hungry, they eat. When they stop, they've had enough. The only overweight animals are those you see in families where we do the same thing. Oh, let me love my pet with food. Let me treat my pet with food. Let me comfort my pet with food. So we need to go back to our original wiring where we enjoyed food and we stopped when we'd had enough. We stopped when we were full. Many people eat junk food feeling terrible. Why can't I stop? And what's wrong with me? And I just don't want to eat like this. And I'm making myself ill and unhealthy and unwell and overweight because you are eating your feelings. And you know, you never have to do that. You're not addicted to junk food because of the chemicals within it. You're addicted because of the pictures you make in your mind. Let me show you how to change that right now. There's a very simple way to change how you eat and it's called making the picture wrong. You see, here's a fact. You eat something if the picture is right. Vegans, 
can't eat meat. Orthodox Jews don't eat shellfish because they make the picture wrong. If you were going to eat a tangerine or some fresh strawberries, you open the fridge and they had blue mold all over them and white fuzzy fluff, you couldn't eat them because in that instant the picture is wrong. If someone spat on your food or sneezed on your food or bled on your food, you couldn't eat it because the picture is completely wrong. If I had in my hand now a big lump of meat, if you're a Hindu that would be offensive to eat a, an animal. A sentient creature would be offensive. If you're a vegan it would also be. But if you're a bodybuilder or you're into keto or paleo, it's like, wow, that's perfect food for me. So it's not the food, it's the pictures you make about the food. And when you can make the picture wrong and you won't eat it anymore, it's a life changer. Here's an example. When you're eating dark chocolate, and it's called Swiss chocolate, can't be Swiss chocolate because sugar cane does not grow in Switzerland. So food manufacturers lie to you all the time. Barn fresh, farm fresh, Swiss is all to make the picture right. I know you know this. I want you to think about a time you've eaten something and had food poisoning. Thought, oh, I could never eat prawns again. I could never eat bananas again. I could never eat undercooked eggs again because the moment when I was sick, I made the picture wrong. So I want you to think now of something you would really love to not eat anymore. Maybe it's cake, maybe it's sugar, maybe it's fries. And I want you to imagine that food is dyed bright blue. So your fries are bright blue. Your cake is bright blue. The burger is bright, vivid, psychedelic blue. And most people think, you know, I can't eat something that color. Now imagine it has that white moldy fluff and that green moldy fluff all over it. Really think about this because in making the picture wrong, you start to make your desire to even want that food wrong. When food smells wrong, we can't eat it. When we give food new labels, we can't eat it. Nobody drank more Diet Coke than me until I started to call it osteoporosis in a bottle. My dentist told me every time you drink one of those, you start to erode tooth enamel. When I made a picture of cola eroding away my tooth enamel with every can I drank, I stopped drinking it overnight. I had to think that thought, and I also had to realize that it's not really good. And then my cousin, who's an architect, told me that they clean headstones and gravestones and concrete slabs using cola and that helped me too. Diets have a 98% failure rate. I had an eating problem for years, years and years and years. And when I sorted myself out and look back and think, wow, I spent so much of my 20s dieting, taking diet pills, starving myself. Now, hey, whatever I want, I got a great relationship with food and I weigh less now than I weigh then. I've been the same weight for years and years. I can still fit into my wedding dress. I've weighed the same weight for over 30 years. And that's not because I'm good or I've got great genes or I'm lucky. It's because I know how to dialogue with my mind, to eat what I want to eat. I can leave food. I can say no to it once. I couldn't even keep chocolate in my house. That was not possible. So I know what it's like, but I also know how to be free of it forever, and I want to share that with you. So when you stop eating or stop eating a lot or start to reduce calories, your body slows down your metabolic rate. And then when you begin to eat again, it packs weight on and it stores that for next time you're going to starve it because your body knows something like, oh, you're going to starve me. So every time you starve me, I'll lower your metabolism. And when you eat again, I'll make sure you hold on to that weight. When you're heavy, when you're overweight, your resting metabolic rate goes down again and it never goes up except something amazing. Hypnosis can push up your resting metabolic rate. There are a few things you can do that can put your resting metabolic rate. It can motivate you, compel you, program you, direct and condition you to actually prefer healthy food. It can make you feel good. It can help you 
drop weight. I also have something called cell command therapy, commanding your body so that it improves your metabolism, your digestion, changing how you eat, resetting your metabolic rate, influencing your mind so you make better choices, feel full fast, find it so easy to leave food. I have so many clients who say, I, I can't leave food. I don't know full. And here's why I tell everyone, including you, there isn't a baby on the planet born going, oh, I don't know what full is. I can't leave food. Babies in the womb have access to food 24 hours a day. And they're born with a the belief there'll always be enough food. I can have it whenever I want. When I don't want it, I don't have to eat it. And what hypnosis does so profoundly is it reactivates, remanifests, regenerates, and recreates, guess what? That perfect attitude to food that you were born with. You were born with it and you can get it back. Therapy only works to the extent that it changes your neural circuits, your neural pathways. What does that mean? You may have heard of something called neuroplasticity. It means the brain actually rewires itself when you think different thoughts. When you think different thoughts, you start to make new neural circuits, new neural pathways. As you make new ones at the same time, the old ones are disintegrating. That may sound a little complex, but it's actually very simple. Imagine if you walked a path every day, kept walking and walking and walking on the same path you would eventually create a groove. That path would be very established. If you stop walking on that path, weeds would grow and flowers would grow and the path would disappear. And that's kind of what a neural pathway is. When we repeat something, we make a new pathway. But at the same time as make a new one, we're disintegrating the old one. So you can make new neural pathways that make you actually love eating better, love your body, exercise a bit because you want to, not because you have to. You're asked to eat junk more than 400 times a day and that's really doing something to your thinking. The mind is still so caught up in this toxic belief that sugar is love, candy is love, but the good news is you can break that toxic relationship forever. And another sign that you are having a toxic relationship with food is binging. When you just can't stop, you eat an entire packet of potato chips. You eat so much candy that you feel uncomfortable, you carry on. When you're binging and you're eating stuff that you don't want, that doesn't even make you feel good, but you're still doing it, you really have to get out of that mindset because I can promise you, your body never goes, yay, more candy, more chocolate, more ice cream, what a reward, your digestion hates it. Your skin doesn't like it. Your digestion is affected by sugar. Your immune system is massively compromised by sugar. It's not your friend. It's actually your enemy. If you want to be in charge of what you weigh, what size you are, how you feel, if you want to be in charge of your health forever, then you have to understand that being able to manage that is so much more than looking at what you eat, how many calories you take in. It's not about that. It's about looking at your feelings, looking at your emotions, looking at what's eating you, and then being able to change it like that forever. Being able to fix those root problems one once and for all. You're going to win. You're going to be free to eat whatever you want, when you want, selectively. You'll never need to binge or be out of control or reward yourself with junk food again. And it's going to feel amazing. And you know what else? It's going to feel normal and natural like you've always been this way.